Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have several clips for you. They are all from Judge Cedric Simpson at the 14th District Court in Michigan. And they are all fairly the same, pretty much the same. This one woman, the first two you see, the first four you see are of the same person. And the first two are from last week when she lied spectacularly to Judge Simpson. Well, she's back for more. And you'll get to see that. And then there's two more that are doing the exact same thing. And I think Judge Simpson gets a little frustrated with them all. So I'll let you guys watch. Court calls case people versus Julie Pampa Pachon. I mess it. I mess it up every time. I had all right. Assistant, assistant public defender on behalf of Miss Julie Vopachon. That's right. All right. Please take your attorney Morgan Barroso on behalf of the people. Julie Vopachon. Vopachon. Julie Vopachon. Julie Vopachon. Thank you, Judge. I have spoken to Miss Barroso and to Miss Vopachon about this matter. Uh, we are close to a resolution. The people have made a reasonable offer. Uh, Go ahead. Have made a reasonable offer. Uh, the issue uh, is there's an NDLP that's going to be requiring something to be paid off that may have already been paid off. So I need to get a receipt from Ms. Vapachan before we're prepared to resolve it. Before we're prepared to resolve it. So I'm asking for a short, either two, one, two, or three-week adjournment, whatever fits the court schedule best, to get that receipt and turn it over to Ms. Barroso to see if that will help to resolve the matter. Um, okay, that's fine. Hey, but is there a reason why she hasn't been going to community corrections? I was sick. I was in the hospital. She missed, uh, she had a court date scheduled for February 14th. That was also. No, I understand that, but she had missed two. January 10th, she tested negative. January 19th, she missed. January 22nd, she missed. January 24th, she comes in, tests positive for THC. And then she misses February 7th. And then misses February 9th. And according to this, was in the hospital on the 13th. Through the fifty. So I, I understand what the court said. Allen. She missed a, uh, several tests. It sounds like in late January into February. Uh, she and, and the only test that she then took for that period was positive. So I know she was in the hospital, which is why the February fourteenth court date was adjourned. Uh, right, I have that one, right. but I, she I hasn't been the, testing. Okay. Uh, she did indicate that she went to go test today. But they did not drop her. They told her to wait till after court. Yeah, because she hasn't been testing. Fair. And I just found I had pneumonia. And I was sick. Like, I just had an Whatever. Okay. Just got did you read this violation report? I did not judge. Because I don't know what's going on with this individual, but the very first conversation, there's a call made to the phone, and it looks like some games are being played with community corrections. Okay. And... She tests positive for marijuana, but then indicates she doesn't have a MMC. She doesn't have a mar medical marijuana card. Um, and that she was at a party and had two marijuana lace cookies. Um, so on. And they keep telephoning her, said she was unable to take the test on 119 doing it having to pick up her kids. 
Then she reminded that they were open from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Instructed to report to community correction um, on January 24th. Um, she did, and that's when she tested positive. Um, she hasn't given any on the February 15th, although the court has them, she didn't give any medical documentation to the two community corrections. Oh. Yeah, it's my understanding that she was working with Ms. Gaines. I guess that must be how the court ultimately received. The Pardon? You said that the court had not received the hospitalization. I have it. I have the hospital. That's that's fine with me. It's the stuff before this that is very concerning because she she does her first test. She's negative. Then she just doesn't seem to do testing as though she's not taking what the court says very serious. I'll continue to go test. And then she's talking about then there's this whole issue with the phone back at the beginning of January about the appointment. I was, I did not. And then she's talking about having to pick up her kids and that's fine, except they they reminded her that she's that they're open from eight to four. Did I go to testing after that for like she told me I could go the next day? And I believe I went that day. What day? The day after that I was supposed to pick my kids up. On the twenty fourth. Right. That's the only test you've done. Do you I'll have see. it in front of you? You want to see my copy? I, yeah. I don't have it in my. I don't, but. Thank you. No, I have not. I. That, like. So, that's, and that's on one. On one ten. Which is reported to me. Corrections required the intake. Da, da, da. Yes, with the marijuana lace cookies, it, it appears, Your Honor. Yeah, approach. Yeah. So she had the marijuana cookies on, uh, on which day? It looks like in the report she said on 110. That was after she was arrested. I, I guess so, Judge. But she just told me it was before she was arrested. So which one is it? Before. She doesn't, she doesn't call, Judge. Uh, Why? She doesn't know the day. Obviously, Judge. I don't know when she was arrested. She, she believes it was right. So tell me about the phone. Because see, I have a feeling you're playing games with me. I don't know anything about no phone. I don't remember. I don't know nothing about no phone. He's a, the judge says that the report is we're not returning, we're not making phone calls, they're not the right phone number for you to reach you to do the testing. Well, no, it, it, that beginning part of the report. Yes, sir. Where they tried to call and they said they were trying to return it to the owner and they said it was actually her on the phone. You understand what Judge Oh, said? yeah, when I lost my phone. And That's what he's asking yeah. you about. Yeah. So, I had lost my phone and I was getting it back from the person. That's what he's asking and you about. They he's... said that the person said somebody called me or something like that. And so Judge is asking you about the, the phone. When did you lose your phone? How did you get your phone back? He wants an explanation for when. I don't know. Know. remember. I don't remember the exact dates, but I, whatever it is, I accept full responsibility. No, no. Whatever. Oh, I don't know. You want to do that because that just had to make my job a lot easier. When I lost it. Well, how'd you get it back? That's what he wants to know. He I called to... my phone and I met up with the girl to give my phone back. Okay. Where? At the gas station. Okay. How'd you get it? I left it there. At the gas station. Yeah. What well, gas? He wants them details. The Sitco gas station right here outside of Hog, or right here outside of Hogback, whatever it's called right here. Okay. So my understanding from what she's telling me, Judge, is that she left her phone at the gas station, the Sitco. This was before the delayed marijuana cookies. That's my understanding. Oh, okay. Correct. This is after the cookies. I ate the cookies before I was arrested a couple of days before that. The, I got arrested on the 31st. Ma'am. You have laced cookies 
take a task, it shows up negative. Then 14 days later, we probably would have known before then, but 14 days later, then you take a test and that's when it shows up in your system. Judge is saying that it should have showed up immediately. That's what he's suggesting. Okay. So he wants to know how is that possible? I don't know. Was there another slip? That's what no. he wants to know. No. Or you're around someone who could have been. Okay, look. Here's the thing. Mr. Feaster, I realize you may be at a slight disadvantage because you don't have the report in front of you. Yes, I'm going to give you my copy of the report. Um, she can sit right in that last seat over there in the jury box. And I will call it back up when she has her story straight. Thank you, Judge. But if she's up here and she's lying to me, ma'am, I don't play that way. Right. So if you come up here lying to me and don't tell me the whole truth, because I can see exactly what's going on here. I'm not stupid. But if you come up here lying to me, you're going to go. It's really simple. Have a seat right there. Sir. Have a seat right that last seat up there. May I brought that again, Jim? Court recalls the case of the Mr. Priester here. People versus Julie Bampachong, I think. Ready again, Judge Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of Ms. Julie Von Pachan. And tomorrow at the podium, please take your name again. Julie Von Pachan. Thank you, Jeff, for giving us the opportunity to uh, pass this matter so I could get a copy of the report and review it. Uh, I did talk to Ms. Barroso about this uh, report. Our office did not receive a copy of it, so I did not have it. We didn't have it, so I apologize for that, Judge. No, it's okay. Uh, and going through the report with Ms. Wapachan, uh, I do have some corrections, clarifications to uh, the information I was providing previously, to Judge. Uh, she did. Oh, so now she's going to tell the truth. Yes, Judge. Yes, Judge. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Um, she doesn't did lose her phone at the Sunoco gas station at about at three eight nine one plat. About one seven. Just is the Sunoco? The Sunoco, not the Sidco. Sunoco, right? Whatever the one's right outside of here. Sunoco, I believe, is what she believes it was, Judge. She says that that phone was recovered prior to her first meeting with community corrections when she got her phone back on one nine of 2024. Uh, she went to Sunoco. She paid $100 to a black female who had her iPhone 10. Uh, that phone did subsequently break. She took it and had it repaired or replaced at the iPhone store at Briarwood. She said she, when she did report on the tents per the report judge, she indicated to community corrections that she did have a marijuana cookie, two marijuana cookies. And so she indicated that she didn't know she was going to be positive. And that's when she said, what do I do when my test comes back positive? Uh, however, that apparently did not metabolize in her system at the, the point of that test, but she thought that first test would have been positive, Judge. Okay, so she the cookies now appeared on the 10th. Yes, Judge. It happened before the day before her reporting, Judge. So I guess that would have been the 9th, reported on the 10th. Go ahead. Okay. She indicated since that time, uh, she has, in fact, uh, been using marijuana, and that is why she has failed to make her testing dates, Judge. She indicates that uh, she knew she was going to be positive on the 10th from the cookie, and she knew that subsequently she'd be positive from actual smoking of marijuana. Uh, so she missed those tests until she actually went in on 124 and tested and did have that positive result. Uh, she indicated that her last time smoking would have been two days ago on Tuesday the 27th, Judge. Uh, she indicates that she does not have an addiction and that she can't stop uh, smoking, but that she had not stopped at this point. And that she takes responsibility, she apologizes, she sees how serious this is. And she wants Hold to on a moment. I need to go back to the ninth. Okay. 
he had the cookie when it would have been the day is it the eighth or the ninth the party would have been she, she believes it was the friday january the ninth i believe that date was she indicated at her friend's party Obviously, when did she get out of jail? She got out on or about twelve thirty. Because community correction received this order for her testing on December thirtieth. On December third. Yes, Judge. Okay. December thirtieth. It says new order received on twelve thirty twenty twenty three. Right. So that's when she would have been released. That's on Judge. And she doesn't report until the ninth or the tenth. Correct, Judge. Why is she late reporting? Well, she didn't call initially, Judge. Why? She 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 didn't apparently didn't want to, Judge. Then she lost her phone on or about January seventh. Just trying to be honest with you, Judge. That's what for what happened. Okay. On the seventh, she lost her phone. She recovered it on the ninth. She had that cookie, and then she reported on the tenth, Judge. Since that time, like I indicated, she has been smoking marijuana due to the stress of the situation. She's not denying that. And that's why she has failed to make subsequent reports aside from that, that January. So she just decided that she just was going to do it her way. She did, Judge. She did. And she's not denying that, Judge. Not now. But obviously, I've impressed upon her. So why did she go over the data test? My understanding, she spoke to Ms. Gaines, and Ms. Gaines told her she had some prior failures to report, and that she knew she had to go report. So she went today, so she uh, tried to actually comply, and she I told her now how serious this is. I don't know if that was impressed upon her. So she just started taking marijuana without a card in violation of the order On the 8th, 9th of January. That's the cookie. Right. Subsequent to that, she started smoking. So before that, what? Before that, she indicated she didn't use often. Not never, but not often. But now she's been using pretty much three days a week. That time. And she knows she's not supposed to. Be. She does, Judge. You understand? Something that she she's not denying now. Uh, she was scared, and now that she, she has two small children, uh, she has a full time job. Uh, she didn't want to lose her job. Didn't want to have difficulty with her children. Understands now. She just can't do it. She doesn't have a medical marijuana card. She has no excuse, and she knows that uh, uh, your honor's not playing about marijuana. Not playing about following court orders. And she indicates that she's given the well, It's a court, you know, and, and I'll tell you, it's the court gave her an order. Yes, Judge. And she decides that she just wants to not follow the court's order. Yes, Judge. And she gets here, gets called on it when she was up here initially, and then it's just through you just lying to me. Yes, Judge. I apologize, Your Honor. You don't lie to the court, ma'am. You just don't. I'll deal with the truth. We can work that out. But if you're going to sit here and lie to me, then that's going to be a problem and you're going to pay a consequence for that. That's what I told her in the box, Judge. When I sat down with her, I told her that she has to be straight with you. If you tell the truth, you generally work with people. Okay, that she apologized and she's sorry that you know, she wanted me to tell you what was going on, how she got to this point. She said she's had difficulty dealing with the stress of the situation. Uh, she's looking forward to getting this resolved. The prosecutor did, did make her a very reasonable offer. We're just trying to get proof of that payment for the destruction of the uh, broken window. To try to get these pled out. But obviously, she needs some help. Uh, she's not afraid to go to treatment if the court thinks she needs treatment. But she believes she can quit. And in 30 days from Tuesday's date, this should be all out of her system <laughs> completely. Because Tuesday was the last time she would have used your honor. But she did 
The 27th. She just kept doing it. Yes, Judge. That's the problem. And the problem is, had she left here today, she would just continue doing it and continue violating this court's order. Yes, Judge. And quite frankly, her promise doesn't mean anything to me. Understood. It just doesn't. Had she taken the test, say, this is why I'm doing it, failed the test, that's one thing. But she just decides that she doesn't have to take the test, takes the test, then decides she doesn't have to want to take the test, just continues using. Yes, Judge. So violating the court order in two ways, first by her use, and then also by not going to testing. And then... All on top of that comes here and lies to me. Anything else you want to say? To her credit, she did eventually uh, she did eventually come forth and tell your honor the truth. Uh, she came clean with me about what's going on and how we got in this situation. Uh, she, she acknowledges that she might have a problem because managing her stress, she's been unable to not use marijuana. And so she acknowledges that and is willing and ready to seek treatment, Your Honor. Your screen is locked on your phone. How is somebody else using your phone? My screen? They can answer calls still. Can they call out? No. And they did. So I don't believe the phone thing either, even now, as you're saying. Adjourned to March 7th, this week, 2024 at 9 a.m. Um, and lady, you're going to have to figure out how you want to do this. You're here on a DB charge or DB type charge. You got resisting and obstructing. You're not following the court's rules. Has her nine millimeter handgun been surrendered? Yes. Yes, Judge. And she indicates that the win window has been paid for that that was broken in the incident. You gotta follow the rules. And uh, the most important thing is you don't lie to me. Understood, Judge. Defendant's bondage revoked pending a hearing on March 7th. Defendant's remanded. Thank you, Judge. Court calls case, people versus, well, not yet. See you there. Julie Vankapon. Assistant Prosecuting Attorney, Morgan Barroso, on behalf of the court. Alex Warren Green, on behalf of Ms. Vankapon. Please state your name. Julie Vankapon. Your Honor, this time we're asking the court to set the matter for a preliminary examination. If I may address Bond. Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Fong Fachan was last before the court a week ago. That time she was remanded for bond violations. I believe she had two missed tests and a positive test. Um, oh, that and lying. Of course, Your okay. Honor. And that's, okay, go ahead. Ms. Fong Fachan does wish to apologize to the court today for being dishonest at that time. She's assured me that she will continue testing that she knows what she needs to do, that if her phone wasn't working or anything else like that, that's really not an excuse to miss testing. She's fully employed at the University of Michigan Hospital. <clears throat> Sorry, Your Honor. 
and cares for her two children. Right now, her two children are living with her sister. So we're just asking the court to consider reducing her bond. Right now, she's held without bond or a personal bond. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If her children are living with her sister, then I'm really concerned because I do have note that she called the victim 41 times. And my understanding was the only reason to contact me? the victim was to have contact with the children. So if the children are not with the victim, then I am concerned. Okay, hold on. So the Daniel Gray, I have listed as the victim. There is, there is contact allowing for conversations about the children. That was my understanding of the bond conditions. So if she is, if the children are with her sister, I see no reason for her to have contact with the victim. Well, the conditions that I have is that the only communication that would have been allowed with the victim regarding the children would have been by text. There have been 41 phone calls. Your Honor, that's the first I've heard of her making any phone calls from the jail. My understanding is that the children are living with Ms. Fonfich and sister and that they do spend time with their dad, who is a complaining witness in this case as well. And prior to her incarceration, it sounds like she did have contact with her dad for purposes of raising with the children. Who? With, with the Grant. children's dad, the complaining witness in this matter. Right. Yeah. That's 41 calls this week? 41 calls since she's been taken into custody. That oh, dear God. Conversations. We never argued or anything. It's just straight about the kids. Counsel? Well, Your Honor, that's again, that's the first I've heard of it. I don't think this one. you want to talk to her about it? Because, I mean, here's the problem. The problem is her bond conditions are that she could only communicate with that individual by text. I realize being in custody, that may not be able to happen. But then the only communication that can occur via text is it has to be regarding the children. You got 41 calls to this person. I have 41 calls to this person and then find out that the person that would be caring for the children is not this person, is not the victim. That's a problem. Just on the face of it, it's a problem. I understand that, Your Honor. And I know Ms. Von Fachan's primary. I hate to do this to the Sheriff's John. Department. Why don't, you, because theoretically, she may have been released. But this throws a whole new light on everything because she hasn't been doing any. I mean, she's just making her own rules, which is really part of the problem with how she got herself in. Outside of lying to me. And now and, and not following her bond conditions. And then now I got another one potential. So let me do this. The. Sheriff's office would be so kind. Take her back. You might want to talk to her because otherwise. What do you want? I don't, just don't like anybody that much. Case people versus Dr. Strong. Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Morgan Barroso, and Alex Warren Green on behalf of Ms. Vaughn Fichan. State your name again. Julie Vaughn Thank you. 
Your Honor, I had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Fong for Chan. I addressed the phone calls with her. Um, and, you know, Ms. Fong for Chan doesn't deny calling the complaining witness in this matter. I don't know the subject matter of those calls, but what Ms. Fong for Chan tells me is that that subject matter, when those calls are reviewed, is going to come back largely regarding the children that the discussions they were having were about the children. The children are staying with her sister while the complaining witness is working. That is filling the void left by Ms. Fong Fajan being in custody. Before Ms. Fong Fajan was in custody, the children would stay with her while the complaining witness worked. And when he wasn't working, would stay with so that arrangement is the same. It's just that Ms. Fong Fajan's sister is taking care of the children while the complaining witness is at work. So, again, I don't know the subject matter of those calls. What Ms. Fong Fajan okay, so, And you don't know from the people, you don't know the subject matter of the calls. Your Honor, I was, when I saw 41 calls, I was under the impression that they would be related to the children, but that doesn't eliminate. My concern. I know. I know. It, and I'm also concerned that her representation is largely relevant to the children, which to me leaves room for an understanding that there's other things being discussed as well. And Your Honor, what Ms. Vaughn for Chan tells me is that none of their communications regard the case. None of them okay. are communications regarding I, what the complaining witness should do or can do or may do. It's nothing to do with that. It, okay, I, I get that. But all that does is stop additional charges. Right? Of course. Or that goes to whether or not there would be additional charges coming from the prosecutor's office. They don't go to what is another violation of the court's order. I mean, just the call itself. I mean, I could even understand if there were a few calls regarding the kids because she can't text because of the position that she, I, I can get that. 41? That's a large number of calls you're on. I understand the call. And, and, and here's my other problem. And this is the problem that people have when they come before me and they lie. You lie to me, then it's hard for me to believe anything that you're saying. And so if you're saying you're ca re calling regarding the children, are there calls to her sister, at least? I have not checked. We don't have the sister's phone number. Because Got it. Council, how soon can you get the the phone calls to? I'll send an email request right now. Pardon? I will send the email request right now. Usually, they get released within a day. Well, during the probable cause, out one week. Uh, is that what we were doing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll adjourn our probable cause out one week to the 14th. 9 a.m. Um, get the calls over. At this point, I'm not going to set it for exam. At this point, what I'm going to do is then... Let's do it this way. You wanted it set for exam, correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to give you a probable cause date on the 14th to try to address her bond to see if we can get her out of custody without some other thing happening. I'll set her preliminary examination. I'll set that for the 26th. 
2024, 9 a.m. That will be before me. Next week, though, we'll address her bond after you've had a chance to listen to the calls. Um, and right now, she has no way to communicate about her kids at all because she was doing it by text before. That's right, Your Honor. And at least pending the hearing next week, her phone privileges, defendant's phone privileges in their entirety are revoked. Just keep making it one. Continue. Thank you. Court calls case people versus William Fridge. Two cases. Prosecuting attorney Morgan Barroso on behalf of the people. Sam Bernstein for Mr. Fridge on the 1179, Your Honor. Good morning, Assistant Public Defender Lauren Perry. Um, one five two one. All right. And what are we doing? Your Honor, we're going to be asking these cases to be set for exam. Okay. Are the all discoveries complete? I'm all set on mine, Your Honor. The video is Pardon? Pardon? I'm all set on mine, Your Honor. On 1152, there is video outstanding. Ms. Barroso um, and Ms. Coons communicated that it's on our way to the office. However, Mr. Fridge would like to proceed in setting the exam. Um, but he understands that if that video comes in, that's not going to be the basis for an adjournment. Correct. You understand that, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Or the video's not there, you're not going to get an adjournment for those reasons. And how soon is the video going to be? I mean, it may be that I, is he held on anything other than this? <clears throat> oh, okay. Your Honor, a media notice was added to the discovery packet yesterday. I do believe it should be released with, before the end of the week. Okay. And would the people have their witnesses available the 19? Yes, Your Honor. Works, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> Preliminary examination in person will be set March 19th, 2024, 9 a.m. That's going to be before Judge Barr. Before Judge Barr. Your Honor, if I may, I do have one additional matter. Yes. Uh, it has come to my attention this morning that the defendant has been calling the victim. Um, I do have notes from an intern that there have been 39 calls to the victim's phone number. And I do have some notes um, as to the nature of those calls. And it is concerning because there is discussion of the case and the victim showing up to court. Um, we are asking for the defendant's phone privileges to be revoked. And I'm presuming that's on um, 1179 that that becomes an issue. That is correct. All right. Mr. Bernstein. Um, I'm sure Ms. Brosa will send me the calls in your honor and I'll, I'll review them and um, file anything necessary after checking those out, but I really can't comment on it right at this moment without, without having seen them. All right. Defendant's bond is continued. In case 1179, defendant's phone privileges are hereby ordered revoked. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Forty one. Oh, just don't like anybody that much. Court calls the case, people versus Derek White. Assistant prosecuting attorney Morgan Barroso on behalf of the people. Andrew Ben, assistant public. I have two cases. 
Okay, what? Okay, what are we doing? Your Honor, um, I am on behalf of my client requesting a preliminary exam at the soonest available date in both cases. Is discovery ready? Yes. Or completed? I believe so, yes. Would the people have their witnesses available on the 19th? Yes, Your Honor. Preliminary examination in person will be set March 19th, 2024, 9 a.m. before Judge Barr, both cases. Bond continued. Yeah, boy. We got, we, yeah, boy. Yeah, go ahead. The defendant has called the victim 22 times. I do want to note, he did not call the number listed for the victim. So I don't believe that just blocking the phone number would be sufficient in this case. I would be asking that his phone privileges be revoked in its entirety. Your Honor, Ms. Barroso informed me of that today. Um, I can only say two things. First, okay. <laughs> thank you. First, it's not clear to me yet from speaking with the prosecutor whether they've actually listened to those calls or heard the content. So I'm not, at least based on my conversation. So I'm not sure maybe they're, if they're 100% they're certain he actually spoke with the, with the complaining witness or one of maybe the many other family members at the residence. I don't know because I have not heard these calls. The only other thing I'd like to say is, I spoke with my client this morning actually down at the jail and advised him, reminded him of the no contact order and not, and not to make any phone calls. That was before I was aware of this. So all I'm saying is whenever these calls occurred, he, is, he has been reminded of not to do that. Your Honor. Our victim advocate did reach the victim at the phone number that the defendant has been calling um, yesterday. Additionally, he's asking how their children are and mentioning that he can't talk about the case with her. So at this point, it is confirmed that it is the victim, and I'm concerned that even if I haven't been able to listen to all of the calls, 23 calls in violation since February 27th. Anything else? Nothing further. Well, you can raise now. it before Judge Barr, but at this point, defendant's phone privileges are revoked. Thank you. Thank you. I thought everyone would know that jail phone calls are monitored. Listen to if they need to, but they are definitely monitored. So one makes 41 calls, the other one makes 20, or the other next one makes 39 calls, and the last one makes 23 calls. So <laughs> It just baffles me that they don't know they're being monitored. But I guess uh, they're criminals and uh, that's what you get. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>